Hello and welcome to this video lesson on electrochemical cells. The last few topics um, told us all about electrochemical cells, the theory of them, but this one's all about what electrical, electrochemical cells are actually used for. And here are our learning objectives. First one being that uh, by the end of the lesson we want to appreciate that uh, electrochemical cells can be used as a commercial source of electrical energy, i.e. electricity or power. Next, we also want to appreciate that cells can be non-rechargeable, rechargeable and fuel cells. So three types of cells that we want to understand. Thirdly, let's be able to use given electrode data to deduce the reactions occurring in the cells and also to deduce the EMF of a cell. And we want to understand the electrode reactions of a hydrogen oxygen fuel cell and appreciate that a fuel cell does not need to be electrically recharged, which is quite useful. However, there are some risks to fuel cells, uh, so we will appreciate not only the benefits but also the risks to society associated with the use of fuel cells and the other cells. So the batteries that we use to power everything from watches to digital cameras and uh, phones uh, are all types of electrochemical cell. But as we said in the intro, uh, some types of cell are rechargeable, like your phone battery, while others can only be used until they run out. They are the non-rechargeable cells. And an example of a non-rechargeable cell, uh, in fact, most of these might be. So this, this one here, I'm drawing a circle around, that would be a non-rechargeable one. Just going to use it and then it's going to run out and you're going to, well, hopefully actually um, recycle it. Um, but they're non-rechargeable uh, batteries like that. Non-rechargeable uh, cells use irreversible reactions. Uh, they can't go back the other way. Um, even if you were to uh, apply an electric current in the opposite direction, they won't uh, reverse those reactions. Um, and you might be familiar with uh, dry cell alkaline batteries that you might buy. They're very common in households. And you would uh, find examples of these in the uh, TV remote control. Um, Smoke alarms, for example, at home. And they tend to be useful for uh, gadgets that don't use a lot of power. These things don't use a lot of power. And also um, that they're only used for short periods of time. So an example of such a battery would be a, um, a zinc carbon dry cell battery. The zinc carbon is a dry cell battery and uh, it's the zinc that's the anode. And the cathode is actually a mixture of carbon and also uh, manganese dioxide. And in between the electrodes there's a paste uh, which um, acts as an electrolyte and it's usually ammonium chloride it's usually ammonium chloride and that acts as the electrolyte i.e. the solutions that we've seen in our uh, two half cell arrangements so the half equations for uh, such a battery would be 
zinc zinc oxidizes so the uh, zinc goes to zinc uh, 2 plus ions gives up a couple of electrons uh, that's the oxidation reaction that um, happens at the anode in a electrolytic cell and as far as the um, other cathode is concerned you remember I, I mentioned manganese oxide so the half equation is uh, manganese oxide plus ammonium in the paste right, it's going to take those two electrons in a reduction reaction and you're going to get a different manganese oxide And a bit of ammonia as well as water there are two half equations so that means we can draw the cell as and let me just draw it up here so we can draw out the cell in our standard notation uh, so we write the oxidation reaction first and uh, the reactant is zinc and it's a solid line because we're going from a solid to a solution um, and of course we want our salt bridge in there and our reactant on the reduction reaction is the manganese oxide that we've manganese 4 oxide and I'm going to put a comma in here because the product of the reduction reaction is also a, uh, a solid manganese uh, manganese 2 oxide 3 so that would be manganese 3 oxide and the EMF of this cell sorry it's getting very crowded down here the EMF of this cell uh, you could work out from the standard equation so the EMF of the right hand side uh, you could look up an electrolytic series and you'd find that to be plus 0.75 electrochemical series rather and we're going to subtract from that the EMF of the left hand side and you'll remember zinc by now 0.76 so that gives you a voltage of a cell like this of 1.51 volts so the next time you're um, pressing your TV remote just open it up and have a look at one of the batteries and check out the voltage of the battery and I bet you find that it's about 1.5 volts now the other thing I just want to uh, highlight for you is uh, when I was writing the half equations I didn't write equilibrium uh, arrows I wrote one-way arrows uh, and whereas theoretically it is possible to um, reverse those reactions uh, in a cell such as this it's not practical um, because uh, in the case of the zinc the zinc actually forms the casing of the battery it's got a little bit of plastic over it as well but uh, the zinc is the is the metal casing uh, and that's that's uh, the anode is actually the casing of the battery and that actually gets thinner as it uh, dissolves it into zinc ions uh, so it wouldn't be practical to try and make that uh, zinc casing up again by by reversing the reaction um, and also the, another reason why these batteries cannot be recharged is that these ammonium ions uh, would produce hydrogen gas which would actually escape from the battery and there's no way of replacing that uh, that hydrogen ion so you wouldn't reform your ammonium So there we have non-rechargeable cells. Let's um, let's next have a look at uh, chargeable cells. Sorry, rechargeable cells. And rechargeable cells. The uh, distinctive thing about rechargeable cells is that they use reversible reactions, or reactions that are practical to reverse even with a battery and you might um, see them in uh, laptops phones 
um, and cars of course car batteries are, are, uh, are rechargeable they recharge using the uh, motion of the car um, as you as you're going along as far as the picture is concerned uh, I'll draw a uh, circle around some of the rechargeable ones so this one's rechargeable looks just like uh, the uh, non-rechargeable battery this one and this battery here that I'm drawing a circle around now that looks like one that you might uh, put on a camcorder uh, and I can see the word rechargeable here so this is another example of a rechargeable battery um, I don't see the type of battery that we might have in uh, in a phone and in fact these days you've your battery that you have in your phone is uh, is inside the casing anyway you don't really get to see it in most models so let's uh, mention lead acid cells they're the ones used in the car batteries uh, so I just put a title here lead acid car batteries And car batteries are usually uh, six cells connected in series. And so in physics, uh, you'd write that something like this, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, and each of these, so they're connected in series to give you extra uh, voltage. Uh, so what, let's just take one of them and, uh, and consider one of the, each of the cells. Okay, so each of the cells consists of uh, an anode and a cathode. Let's write the cathode first. And we've got an anode as well. So the cathode is, uh, is lead, made of lead, and that's where the oxidation happens at the cathode. And the anode is, uh, is usually made of uh, lead for dioxide. And in a electrolytic cell at the anode, we have reduction. And both uh, electrodes end up coated in lead sulfate. Right, so the half equations are at um, the oxidation reaction is at the cathode. Uh, we have our lead and we have sulfuric acid as our electrolyte. So we're just interested in the uh, sulfate ions. And they're in equilibrium with this lead sulfate that coats the um, electrode and two electrons are given up in that oxidation reaction and uh, so let's just say the let's just make sure we remember that's oxidation and then the reduction react a half equation involves the other uh, electrode the anode the uh, lead dioxide so lead dioxide, PbO2, that's also a solid. Um, and the electrolyte is also sulfuric acid. And that's, actually we've got, uh, we, we need our four hydrogens in there as well. Hydrogen ions are in there and uh, our two electrons that we're giving up. And that's in equilibrium with our lead sulfate and a bit of water is given off. So if that's our two half equations, our oxidation and our reduction equations, then from those two we can draw this cell uh, so we want to on the left hand side draw the oxidation reaction starting off uh, with the uh, reactant so we've got lead uh, in solid form and our product of our 
um, oxidation reaction is lead sulfate, also solid. So we're going to put a comma here. So we're going to have PbSO4. And we want our salt bridge in there. And so for our reduction reaction, we have lead oxide, solid and lead sulfate, solid. So that's our standard representation of uh, our cell drawing. And lastly, let's just make sure we remind ourselves about the EMF of the cell. And this is going to be E right hand side. And if you look that up in a table, you'd find the right, right hand side was uh, 1.69 and E left hand side is minus 0 0.36 giving you about 2 volts so if you have 6 of them in series uh, you would get if you, you get six times that voltage, so a car battery is about 12 volts. Next time uh, you're looking under a car bonnet, then uh, do look at the car battery and check out that it's uh, a 12 volt battery. I bet it is. Okay, thank you. Let's carry on. And the last thing to mention about uh, rechargeable cells is uh, another two different types. Uh, so we have uh, nickel cadmium. Nickel cadmium. Uh, cells are rechargeable and lithium ions generally li uh, written like that and to recharge these batteries uh, you apply a current um, and what that does is it forces the electrons to flow in the opposite direction around the circuit uh, so they would naturally go um, in the direction uh, of oxidation reduction and what happens is when you uh, put them into a contraption and then and then put them into your plug socket uh, the the voltage of the power supply at home uh, the electricity supply at home uh, forces those electrons to go around in the opposite direction and uh, make the uh, reactions uh, make the reversible reactions happen instead so that recharges them and it's possible in this case in these in this case of the nickel cadmium and the lithium ions uh, because none of the substances in these two rechargeable batteries uh, are gases and can escape uh, they're not used up so that's why uh, we can employ the uh, reversible nature of, of the uh, redox reactions So as promised in the lesson objectives, let's have a look at the pros and cons of non-rechargeable cells. And firstly, let's compare cost. Let's compare cost. So non-rechargeable batteries are cheaper than rechargeables. So they're cheaper. However, um, rechargeables uh, are replaced less uh, a non-rechargeable batteries have to be replaced each time each time they run out so there's a pro and a con and let's now consider lifetime Yes, yeah, so as far as lifetime is concerned, for a single use, the uh, non-rechargeable lasts longer. For single use. But, the problem is that uh, when it's used, you throw it out. 
So you throw it out, whereas with a rechargeable one, uh, although a single use um, doesn't last long, uh, you just recharge it and use it again. Okay, so what should we say next? Let's uh, compare power. So non-rechargeable cells have, have actually have low power. So uh, only about 1.5 volts for a non-rechargeable um, battery. So they're only going to be used in th uh, things like um, uh, infrared, remed, infrared TV remotes and uh, things like um, the smoke alarms and things. So it's low power. So if you uh, want to use the um, applications such as laptops and uh, mobile phones that use a lot of power, then you have no use for a non-rechargeable. Not, so let's say not used for high power applications such as laptops and uh, phones. Okay, now after power, let's uh, consider uh, resources and waste. So many more non-rechargeable batteries are created. So the non-rechargeable uh, cells use uh, much more uh, resources, many more resources. And of course they are thrown out, uh, so there's more waste as well. Whereas with the rechargeable batteries, uh, you just reuse them instead of uh, buying new ones. Um, it's worth saying that actually both types of battery are recycled, are recyclable, for example, uh, uh, actually. But the uh, we don't often recycle batteries, and mostly they're just thrown in the bin and they end up in a landfill. Lastly, let's compare toxicity. And here is where non-rechargeable cells have an advantage. So there's uh, um, no, not usually any nasty metals like uh, lead and cadmium. And so less lead and cadmium, uh, and so less toxic. Um, although they may contain mercury, some of them, so they're less hazardous in landfill, especially if the contents leak out and pollute water sources. Okay, so fuel cells are another type of electrochemical cell. And let's just dwell on the distinction between uh, fuel cells and most other electrochemical cells. And the distinction is, is the location of the chemicals that uh, generate the electricity. So in most cells, the uh, chemicals that uh, generate the electricity are contained in the electrodes. And the uh, electrolyte. Uh, whereas in a fuel cell, the chemicals are stored separately outside, outside the cell, and they're fed in when electricity is required. And so, one example of a fuel cell is a hydrogen oxygen fuel cell. Um, such as this one, we've got a picture of a bus here that's uh, powered by a hydrogen oxygen fuel cell. And we're going to uh, look at the hydrogen oxygen fuel cell in some more detail in the next slide. So let's first have a look at a diagram of a hydrogen oxygen fuel cell. And here we have one here. And uh, you'll see 
around the outside is a uh, metal casing and uh, what we do is we feed hydrogen in hydrogen is one of the chemicals that stores the chemical energy that's going to be made into electrical energy and the hydrogen is fed in to this electrode here which is the uh, negative electrode so this these are the two electrodes here let me just these are two the electrodes one on the left one on the right this one uh, electrode here is the negative electrode which makes this one here the positive electrode And you notice the electrodes go right down to the bottom of the uh, of the casing, and the electrodes might be uh, made of um, platinum uh, over a ceramic um, layered material, and so the ceramic layered material gives surface area, and the platinum gives the uh, the inert conductivity. So if hydrogen is fed in on the left hand side. Um, then the other chemical that we use is oxygen and that's fed, fed in from the right hand side. Oxygen is fed in from the right hand side and uh, that goes to the positive electrode as is illustrated there. And then out the bottom here is going to be our product. So water is our product. We're going to react hydrogen and oxygen and make water and in the process we're going to uh, release some energy uh, and that's going to be converted into electrical energy which we can use to for example power the bus so if you see this uh, contraption here you know that is where the power is used and that might be to uh, to drive the um, camshaft of the of the bus instead of a piston engine you have this uh, hydrogen oxygen fuel cell but uh, in either case, what the function of either the piston engine or the hydrogen oxygen fuel cell is to drive the camshaft, which turns the wheels. And the next piece of apparatus for you to notice is, uh, is the dotted lines uh, next to the electrodes. And they're called ion exchange membranes. And in this case, what they do is they let protons or hydrogen uh, ions they let them through, uh, but they don't let electrons through. So they separate the protons from the electrons. The electrons go upwards, as you can see from the diagram, and the protons are attracted across the electrolyte uh, to the positive electrode. And the electrolyte, for example, that could be an acid or a base. You can have hydrogen oxygen fuel cells of uh, either kind we're gonna i'm going to show you reactions well i might show you reactions for both but i'll certainly show you the reactions for uh, an acid electrolyte yeah let me just finish this uh, labeling for you so this is the ion exchange membranes and if you remember they allow protons through but not uh, the electrons and let me just list out that that is a platinum containing electrode platinum coating ceramic Okay, now let's just uh, have a look at the reactions that go on at the two uh, electrodes. Okay, so let's talk about the negative electrode first. And at the negative electrode, we've got hydrogen uh, being fed in. And what happens is that uh, hydrogen gas is... Uh, turned into hydrogen ions, it's oxidized into two hydrogen ions and gives up two electrons. And what you'll notice is the electrons 
and that happens all the way up and down that uh, negative electrode and the electrons go vertically up because they can't get through that uh, ion exchange membrane and so the hydrogen ions they come through the membrane and travel through the electrolyte and uh, the electrolyte is usually acidic so they can travel through the electrolyte to the other side so that brings us on to the other um, uh, electrode, the reaction at the other electrode and here we're feeding oxygen in and oxygen accepts those um, hydrogen ions and it also needs to accept four of those electrons that have been uh, separated from their hydrogen molecules and those three all react to make a couple of water molecules So just writing that out overall, you've got uh, you've got a couple of hydrogen uh, gas molecules and an oxygen gas molecule, and they are reacting together to make two water molecules. Uh, the water coming out of the bottom, as it's shown there. Now the interesting thing is here, you've, where's the energy come from? You've you've uh, driven the the camshaft and turned the wheels. Uh, but you started off with a bit of hydrogen you finished east and a bit of oxygen and you finished off with some water um, so where does the energy come from well of course the energy has come from the fact that uh, there's less chemical energy or, or enthalpy in water than there was in the two gases that we started with and so that difference in enthalpy has been converted into electricity you'll notice that at the negative electrode the electrons were split off from the hydrogen ions and they went in one direction and drove the camshaft and the hydrogen ions went in another direction uh, to the positive electrode where they met up with the oxygen that was being fed in and also the electrons that were coming around the circuit uh, and then made the water there so that's where the energy uh, comes from and it's all pretty neat because um, uh, water is a nice uh, easy to dispose of waste product but talking about pros and cons uh, let's deal with that in quite some detail on the next slide oh but before we do that let's just uh, as I half promised you let's just look at uh, the reactions uh, that would happen at the electrodes if we had a alkali so let's say we've got an alkali electrolyte so this was the reactions for an acid electrolyte and let's um let's do it now the reactions for the alkali electrolyte so the negative electrode this is what would happen instead you would you would have uh, oxygen combining with some electrons um, and some water Right, and they would provide you with some hydroxide ions and the hydroxide ions would travel from right to left in this case across the electrolyte the electrolyte being alkalinic anyway and so they would get eventually to the uh, positive electrode which would be the hydrogen electrode now uh, where they would make some hydrogen gas So those hydroxide ions would meet the hydrogen, uh, the, the hydrogen gas, and they would make a couple of water molecules. And in the process, they'd give up a couple of electrons, which would travel around the circuit and generate the um, camshaft in a similar way to the way with an acid electrolyte. Okay, so that said, let's let's crack on now with the pros and cons of these hydrogen fuel cells. So, the, of course, the major advantage of uh, these fuel cells over batteries uh, that we've been studying before is that, uh, they, of course, they don't need electrical charging. Uh, so let's write that down. They don't need electrical recharging. Um, 
they don't need electrical recharging because um, as long as hydrogen and oxygen are supplied, the cell will continue to produce electricity. And what's more, um, the other benefit is that the only waste product is water. So the waste product is water, which you can actually electrolyze again and make into hydrogen and oxygen and uh, regenerate your fuel chemicals. You'll remember with um, electrochemical cells, uh, you know, it often had nasty um, products like lead and cadmium in them, which uh, take a lot of uh, disposing of. Also here, we've got no um, carbon dioxide emissions from the cell itself, at least. Right, so I'm gonna put that in brackets because it's only a partial pro. So no CO2 emissions. However, it's, I've put it in brackets because when you um, regenerate your hydrogen and oxygen, usually by electrolysis, uh, you need to uh, supply some power for that, some electrical power. And that electrical power has generally come from power stations, some of which will be uh, powered by fossil fuels. So you do actually get carbon dioxide emissions when you consider the whole picture. Um, but still, it's more efficient um, so it's about 40% more efficient than, than other means as far as carbon dioxide is concerned, at least. And so that is one of the downsides of um, the hydrogen fuel cells. You, you need a supply of hydrogen and oxygen. And that's usually, as we said, produced by electrolysis of water. Um, and that requires electricity, as we said, and that requires burning fossil fuels. The other con of hydrogen, um, oxygen fuel cells is that hydrogen is actually very flammable. So there are inherent dangers with uh, handling uh, hydrogen and transporting hydrogen in fact uh, because you know, you're going to have to have a hydrogen tank in your in your bus as you drive along because it is used up um, and you know as you go along to produce the electrical power uh, and so it's quite expensive to uh, make sure that the hydrogen is safe so that would be one of the major cons and that summarizes the pros and cons but uh, before we leave off let's um Let's just have a look at electrolysis of uh, water for a point of interest. Here we have a little laboratory contraption. We might do this in class, in fact. Um, you see we've just got a beaker here uh, filled with water. We've got two electrodes, the red one being the uh, anode and the black one being the cathode, because we're talking about electrolysis here. Uh, so the red one is positive and the black one is negative. And so the power pack is just a normal... Um, normal um, electrochemical cell or a battery uh, using common language and uh, we're using that power to actually separate the water molecule into its constituent parts the hydrogen and the oxygen uh, you can see the bubbles of the uh, gases coming off each electrode and rising to the top and and actually uh, filling the space in the top of the test tubes and here's a little question for you. Um, how come that if I label this test tube two and that test tube one, um, how come test tube two has more gas in it than test tube one? I'll leave that question with you. You can tell me in class. Okay, let's uh, just check off our learning objectives as usual. Uh, do we appreciate the electrical? Uh, electrochemical cells can be used as a commercial source of electrical energy. Well, we all use our phones and our TV remote controls. Um, so yes, we can appreciate that. Uh, do we appreciate that cells can be non-rechargeable? Yeah, we looked at those. Uh, rechargeable, like our lithium uh, phone batteries. And fuel cells we've just looked at just now. So I think that's good. Uh, 
Um, are we able to use given electrode data to deduce it? the reactions occurring in the cells and to deduce the EMF of a cell. We spent a couple of slides on that, so that's good. And do we understand the electrode reactions of a hydrogen oxygen fuel cell? I think so. We went through both the acid and the alkali, alkali electrolytes versions. Um, and we also acknowledge that a uh, fuel cell does not need to be electrically recharged. It just needs to uh, electrolyze some more water. Um, and do we appreciate the benefits and risk to society associated with the use of these cells? Uh, just done that. Uh, so one benefit would be that um, water is a safe uh, end product and another and a risk would be that hydrogen is flammable. Good, thank you, and uh, I hope that's been clear for this video lesson, and I look forward to meeting you on the next one.